Hey guys, I uh, wanted to take just a quick minute to show you some stuff, some uh, tips and tricks that I've kind of picked up uh, while working on this uh, 5.9 Cummins 12 valve. Um, a lot of this has to do with engine timing in relation to the P-pump. Um, some things that I've encountered, some mistakes I've made, and I figured if anybody else is kind of new to working on these engines... Uh, in terms of timing, this might be beneficial and, and helpful. So, for starters, um, Cummins actually includes a couple, couple different timing tools included with the engine. Uh, the first of which, if we go over here, okay, underneath your injection pump, right here, is the timing pin for the motor. Now that puts the motor at top dead center, and that's what that guy looks like right there. It basically, there's a hole, a reference hole in the back of the camshaft gear uh, that this sinks into. And that tells you if your motor is at top dead center. Um, there is also a um, timing pin. Let's see if I can get this open here. All right, and there's a timing tool, excuse me, under the cap on your injection pump. Now, this one's been replaced. Normally, these are plastic. Uh, this one has been replaced with an aluminum one because I made the mistake of uh, snapping the plastic one. So, don't make that mistake. Plastic ones, I think, about $75. And that aluminum have to be $40, but still, you don't want to break it if you don't have to. So, <clears throat> in a nutshell, this alignment pin back here uh, puts the motor at top dead center. This timing tool here in the injection pump puts the injection pump uh, where it needs to be, whether that's 12 and a half degrees or 14 degrees before top dead center uh, for timing the motor uh, in relation to the, the crankshaft. Uh, excuse me, timing the injection pump in relation to the crankshaft. So uh, first off, none of that seems really complicated, right? You, you know, put the pin in there, you've got a pin in here, simple. The problem I ran into, now granted I'm not, uh, you know, I've worked on a couple of these, but I've really not done a whole lot to them. This has been a complete rebuild from the ground up. And one of the problems I had was initially trying to get my motor at top dead center. I snapped that pin. I uh, <laughs> literally snapped the end of this guy off right inside the uh, camshaft sprocket. Um, it just clink, you know, I, I was spinning the motor too fast, even though I was doing it by hand. And then that you know, it was enough force to break that pin off. Got a second one. Uh, they made the exact same mistake. Thought I was going slow enough and uh, still ran into the same problem. So here's what I did to figure this whole thing out. So let me get a flashlight here, see if we can show you a couple things. See if we can find this, this hole here. Probably won't be able to get a good angle on it, but we're going to try anyway. Okay. So... See if we can focus here. You can just barely see on the left side of that hole. You can barely see the timing hole that that pin sinks into. Okay. So there are a couple different ways to find that. I have actually found that putting this pin in and putting a little bit of pressure on it and turning the motor over by hand is likely gonna snap that little nub off every single time. So what I would recommend is have somebody come in here, just put a finger in that hole, and gently turn the motor over with like a barring tool, something very slow. This obviously works best if the motor's out of the truck like it is here. Anyway, you can feel, you can feel that, that pocket, you can feel that hole where that pin is supposed to fall. Okay, now, if you're used to working on any engine, the first the first question I had about this whole process is, how do I know if I'm truly at top dead center or if I'm 180 degrees out? And it wasn't until I opened the timing cover, let's come back over here. It wasn't until I opened the cover here that I fully understood what was going on. So your crankshaft pulley, I'm sorry, your crankshaft sprocket is half the diameter of your camshaft sprocket. Your camshaft is right in here. Your sprocket is right in there. So this sprocket is double the size of your crankshaft. So basically for every two rotations of this sprocket, it only amounts to one rotation of this. So that's how you get this little dowel in there 
and it's at top dead center every time and you don't have to worry if it's 180 degrees out anything like that um, that also comes into play when you're talking the injection pump okay the injection pump gear is right here and it again is the same diameter as the camshaft so for every one rotation of this guy uh, and one rotation of the camshaft you're getting two rotations of the crankshaft um, so setting that timing pin is is the key so okay so we turn the motor over by hand you have somebody put their finger um, in that hole that will help to identify when you're getting close and then you can go really really incrementally and push this pin in to find your actual top dead center. Now you'll notice I've got a couple marks here on mine. Let's see if we can get that to focus here. Okay, so I've got a red mark and a white mark. Those are just grease mark, uh, grease pen marks. The red mark, if we come back over here, the red mark indicates, again I'll have to flash my, shine my flashlight. The red mark indicates if it is not quite timed in, okay? What I did was I spun the motor over Got it very definitely not on top dead center and pushed the pin in, and that's about where it landed. So in relation to this housing, um, the red sticks out, okay? You can see the red. Now, the white is for, to, to basically give you a visual indication if you're at top dead center and the uh, pin is properly seated. So we'll push that back in, and there you go. That's just a visual indicator that you've got the pin in the, uh, in the hole and you're correctly set. So <clears throat> that was the first thing I did. The second thing I did, once I actually got the motor at top dead center, once I got the um, injection pump timed, and in this case I've got 18 and a half degrees on this particular pump, um, I put some uh, paint pen marks on the case. Now this would change theoretically if you pulled the, the gears off and all that. Um, it might change some of these paint pen marks, but for the time being, this is going to work for my engine. So right here, and again, this is real hard to see. This is really only used or potentially useful if the motor's out of the truck and you can actually see these marks. But you see on my crankshaft, I have a little paint pen mark and on the housing, I have another paint pen mark. That tells me that <clears throat> I could be top dead center or I could be 180 degrees out. So if I were to, right now I know I'm at top dead center, but if I were to rotate this engine around, that mark is gonna line up again. Well, that doesn't tell me if I'm at top dead or 180 degrees out. So what I did as well is I put a paint pen mark on my injection pump and also on the cover. So when that mark and that mark are lined up, I know that the motor is at top dead center and uh, we're, we're good to go. Um, if I were to turn this over one revolution, okay, and line up these paint pen marks again, um, I, you, you would find that this mark here on the uh, on the actual nut would be down here and you see I put a, just a little white mark again this is not rocket science this is just kind of what I did so that I could turn the motor over and not have to constantly find that pin uh, to verify where I was at um, this for me actually was was especially helpful in setting the valves in setting the valve lash so First first step, you get the motor at top dead center and you adjust a number of intake valves and exhaust valves. And then you have to basically get the motor 180 degrees out to do the other um, three intake and three exhaust valves. So that made it really nice. When the motor's at top dead center, you do the first six in the uh, specified order. Flip the motor over 180 degrees and you do the remainder. So uh, just a quick reference. I know that's kind of a long-winded explanation, but... I wanted to show you what I did. Um, I'll include some pictures of the pins that I've snapped because I have a collection of them now. Um, and hopefully you don't have to make the same mistake I did. Uh, you don't have to wait for more pins to show up in the mail and go through the whole hassle. If you do the steps that I expl explained here, um, you can find that pin. You can make you can find the pin uh, hole in the camshaft, make a couple marks on the crank and on your injection pump, and then always have quick reference uh, for where your motor is at any given moment. So hope that helps. Take care. Oh.